Hi, I'm Lonnie Self. I'm the driving service manager of MND for North Shepherd. I want to talk to you today about the VP44 and also some of the diagnostic steps that you need to take. And I'm not going to get real heavy into that, but mainly I want to talk about fuel pressure and supply and things like that. But also, like on this particular truck, people have called me for help on diagnostics on these trucks. And today I'm just going to focus on the crank sensor because it seems like I've had about a half a dozen, maybe a little bit more over the years, people ask me about crank sensor diagnostics. And so far today, every time they call me, or like on this one, they send me the truck, it has a new ECM on it. Now, and it didn't help the problem. And today, prices on ECM for these vehicles, remember it's an ISB VP44 2002, again, this is a mid-range, uh, $1,500, $2,000, $2,300 for an ECM, plus labor installed and uh, flashing. So, but right, we're going to get into that, but right now, because I'll have to pull the table up and so you can read some voltage readings, a few things that's really required on a VP44, here is one. We manufacture these upstairs, we manufacture them, and every one we put on, we put a PSG on it, or what I call them, brain box, a little computer. But this, these pumps have a 24 month unlimited mileage on them, and that's a big deal. That's a big deal to your customers and also to the end user. And I don't care if they're painted black, not painted, painted red, or John Deere green, some of these basics I'm going to talk about today, you're going to have to know them and you're going to have to check them if you want this pump to survive on this engine. Now with that said, 24 months unlimited mileage, you got to understand this is a diesel pump, it's not a water pump. And we get them in here full of water, gas, dirt, you name it, we found it inside these pumps. So with that two years unlimited mileage, you got to take care of the, the fuel system, the, the fuel supply system. So just remember that. Now, again, we'll get back to the crank sensor. But BP44 is a very, is that pump is very sensitive to fuel pressure and fuel supply. No injection pump should have to fight for fuel. We need to make sure these injection pumps have the proper fuel, the flow, and make sure it, got, it has diesel fuel. Now, what we do. We like to test these engines under load. Every time we run diagnostics, we have these long hoses. I like a zero to 30, uh, zero to vacuum, because that way I can see both sides of it. And you can do make yourself some homemade ones, if you don't see those like I did. Or also, you can go in there, you can actually buy them from us, we'll get them for you. These are all these other fittings that we use on running diagnostics on all the other diesels. Now, <clears throat> on this one, we put this on the inlet stud, like on a Dodge, you put this on the inlet banjo bolt on the VP44. If you don't know which one it is, it's the banjo bolt closest to the firewall, driver's side closest to the firewall. The one, the front one, closest to the radiator, that's return, there's a return fitting in there. So you would put this in it, and on this one, they have a smaller banjo bolt, so we don't have one made for that. So we just go over to filter housing and grab the inlet pressure. Now, Dodges, most of them can be converted to the ones in the tank. And I'm, that's a different story, but I'm not a big believer in it. I, I still like these guys. And these guys have been modified with check valves, so they no longer damage the pumps like they used to do, and damage the injection pumps like they used to in the past. But when you install these new, or let's say you put the injection pump on, these things get airlocked. And you can hear them run, they'll have a high pitched squeal to them or high pitched noise to them, but they won't put any fuel pressure. So this is why we rigged up this, because we'll have this hooked to the fuel pump, and we'll open this up, we'll turn the key on, and on a Dodge, you just bump it, and like this one, you just turn it on and bump it, same thing, the pump will run for a while. You turn this wide open, and it'll flow fuel out and get some of the air of that banjo out of the uh, supply pump. And then we'll also what we'll do, we won't close it all the way, we'll have a hose here into a bucket. 
and we'll let that slowly spray out, a real small spray. And what that does, it keeps fuel moving from this electric pump so it doesn't get air locked, and also it just helps with a bleeding procedure. And once you loosen all the, the lines and start cranking, start getting fuel out lines, you can close them, and then you can crank it, and once it starts to start, the engine starts up, you can just shut that off and measure fuel pressure. 10 pounds, to me, is probably minimum, especially idling. Like this one here had 12 pounds of fuel pressure at idle. And under load, it made 10 pounds, and I'm okay with that. Um, book may say 14 or 15, and some will do that. But if I have 10 pounds of fuel pressure under a load, I'm gonna let that go. It's gonna be okay with me. So, again, I just wanna recap. The, the BP44 is the most sensitive injection pump I know to fuel pressure and fuel supply. And if, you, if you're if you starving that, if you don't have enough fuel pressure in that BP44, I guarantee it'll set timing codes over and over and over again. You have to have the fuel in it and you have to have the proper uh, pressure. If not, it throw timing codes. This one threw timing codes too, but it had a failure here in the injection pump. And so the first thing we did when we saw that timing failure, we made sure it had fuel pressure. Okay, enough said with that. You gotta feed them some fuel. Take a break. Okay, now back to the crank sensor. Here's an easy way to test it. Now I have the breakout harnesses because I do sometimes I have to go real far into my diagnostics. And I, use, and I have two of these. These are probably about $150. Again, that may be pricey, I understand that. But compared to a ECM, PCM, that's a pretty cheap value. But again, if you don't have this, you can back probe. On, a, on the crank sensor, the factory plug has A, B, and C. And unlike any three-wire sensor on these engines, you have a five volt, you have a ground, and you have the signal wire going, the signal voltage going back to the computer. So, let me give you the part number for this harness in case you want to buy it and we can sell them to you. It's 382-4475, and this will do multiple sensors. This just does not do the crank sensor. That's, that's one reason I have two of them, because sometimes when we're running a test, we have two voltmeters on the dash, and we use these harnesses. So, just to make sure we got everything we understand, here's your crank sensor. Now, this is a mid-range, 2002. The crank sensor is down here. Like on a Dodge, you'd be up by the, by the starter. It's on the uh, driver's side, along the oil pan, about three-fourths of the way down, and you'll be able to recognize it have a little shield like this. So, we unplug it. Plug this in. We plug that in. Now you're good to go, and you can run your meters here. Now this one, you're gonna have five volts and a ground, and we'll turn the key on here in a minute, and you have a signal wire. Now, you always use the ground for the, sig for the, for the sensor, and you check your five volts. Make sure you have a nice steady five volts. And then you could hook your uh, positive lead to your voltmeter to the uh, signal wire. And what you can do, you can crank this engine over by hand and what you're going to see is your voltage probably go to 0.3 to 4.8. I'm not saying half a volt to 4.5 because Cummins tell you their sensors operate at 0.5 to 4.5. But this is testing. Okay, so we're cranking over by hand. Now speaking of that, this is what we use to crank it over by hand. This is a Matco and it's MST 9565 Apple. And the one I have in there is a Snap-on. So they have Snap-on, Maco, you can get these. You, these are they're well worth their money, so you need to get them. And you can also see this one's badly scarred, <laughs> like that was missing a tooth. You do not want to leave these in here and crank it. And you can obviously see I've done that, and it chews the teeth off of them. So actually, I'm on my third one. So anyway, make sure you don't start it with that in there. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this table over and hopefully you'll be able to read the voltage while I turn that. Like I said, I have this installed. 
with a long extension and a ratchet, and I have my harness hooked up, and I have my voltmeter. And we're going to go through that, and I'm going to crank it so you can see it. Hopefully, you see it. And there's one more test I'm going to do. Is you know, a lot of people don't have a, a scope or an expensive voltmeter. You know, we sell products to dealers, to independent shops, and to the end user, you know, the guy working in his driveway. And he may not have a, you know, nice voltmeter. So what I'm going to tell you also, an old guy named Dan used to work here at M&D. Told me about this. You can, you know, if you do a square wave, lay over a, an AC wave, so these guys, it'll convert that to an AC voltage. So I'm going to show you that I also use that during my testing because what I'm looking for, I just want to see activity on the circuit. And I already have my voltmeter here real quick. I've already got things hooked up. So I'll just crank the engine, slip this on to AC voltage, and see, see what I've got activity. The voltage to me is not important. I just want to see it go from zero to some voltage, some AC voltage. So that tells me that we've got signal and we've got a, a, a activity in that harness. Now another thing that happens on these, and we also know that all bolts and fasteners fail. And I would say half of the people that called me that put the put, already put ECMs on it, put one guy put an engine harness on it, they changed the sensors. But remember, this is the tone wheel bolted to the crankshaft on these ISBs. The ones that have a crank sensor. We're going to get into that to, and I'm going to tell you about that also. So if this piece falls off, which occasionally they do, you're going to have you're going to lose your crank sensor. So sometimes you're going to have to take this crank sensor out there, bar the engine over with a mirror and look down in that hole, make sure that tone wheel is not missing anything or you can do this, and as you're turning it, you're going to see a, you're going to have a section of your when the crank's turning that you won't see any movement in the voltage. So that would be a clue that you've got a damaged wheel. Now, with that said, like on some of the Dodges, early model has a crank sensor and a cam sensor. If it has a crank sensor, it's the boss. Okay, just like this one here. This one has a cam sensor and a crank sensor, but we're not even concerned with the cam sensor. We're, we're concerned about the crank. Now, newer models, especially on the Dodges, they did away with the crank sensor and went back to just the cam sensor. Then obviously it's the boss. So always remember that. And the way you can tell without getting up there and crawling in there, or you can check and see if it's got the right ECM or the right engine. If it has, if you hook your scan to it, it has four RPM voltages, then it has a crank sensor. If it only shows three RPM volts, RPM signals, then it does not have a crank signal. Again, if you have three RPMs, you don't have a crank sensor. If you have four RPM signals, you have a crank and a cam. Just remember that. That'll help you with your ECM sometimes. Okay, so I'm going to slide this up and turn the key on, and I'm going to hopefully you'll be able to see the voltage. And I don't, and I'll drop this. Okay. Can you see it? Okay. So, turn the key on. Okay. You have three wires. You have a ground. And you have five volts. And there we are. We're hooked up to them. Five volts. Let me check. 4.985 and call it 5 volts. Now, again, when you're testing circuits, use their ground. Don't use a chassis ground. You want to make sure your ground to this sensor is good. So, we're going to leave the ground wire on. We're going to take it out of our 5 volt supply and now we're going to put it in signal. Okay? And what do we have? We have 0 0.3 or 0 0.03. Now I'm going to rotate this and you're going to see this go up to 4.8. I'm going to bar over the engine. Did you see it change? Okay. So that's what you're looking for. 
So that would end, if I were you, I would make a mark on the crankshaft and go one complete revolution. That way you could test the entire loop of that crank signal, I mean the tone wheel for the crank. But also I'm old school, so me personally, I go two revolutions just to double check everything. Now, I'm going to do, and we're just going to get real loud here, and you're not going to be able to hear me, so I'm going to start it up, and you give me the thumbs up if you see voltage this thing changes. So, again, this is just a quick diagnostics. I'm not looking for a pattern right now. I'm not looking for that. I'm just going to look for activity. You know, I want to make sure we that wire has activity on it, and if I need to, I'll go to the ECM, do the same thing, back probe the wires, and uh, check for activity. And then that's the start of my diagnostics. If I don't have any activity there when I crank it, then I'm going to start looking for harnesses, something's going on with the sensor, pigtails. And speaking of pigtails, you know, I'm a pigtail freak. I change a lot of pigtails when I change sensors, especially when it comes to cam and crank. I'm big in that. Okay, so I'm going to switch this to AC voltage right here, and you can see it's showing basically zero volts. I have it to ground, and I have it to signal going back to the computer. So let me know if that changes, if you start seeing volt, if that changes from zero to two. I think, I think it is two, but again, it's not important on the voltage. Okay, as you can see, that's just a quick check to see there's activity on that circuit. And again, when I left the keys on doing this video, the battery's a little low. But anyway, I just want to tell you thank you for listening and I hope this helps you. And if you got any questions, just give Monty a call or anybody at MD Distributors and uh, we'll be glad to help you with anything you need or any diagnostic problems. Again, this is Monty with MD. Thank you so very much. That's